is July 23rd, 2024, and I was wondering where we are on scripture. It's kind of a prophecy of a lot of things being fulfilled as Benjamin Netanyahu is going to be speaking before a joint congressional meeting tomorrow, which is in hours from now. As you know, there's going to be hostility and protest as he will be presenting his case before Congress. I anticipate there's going to be much protest in that. Where are we at as far as the biblical timeline? Well, let's just say we're surviving the times we're living in nonetheless. And that could be personal, that could be on a bigger scale. But the 70 days, uh, I'm sorry, not the 70 days, the 70 weeks of the prophetic calendar in Daniel 9.27 is the one scripture that we've been watching for. Now, a lot of people speculate that if Donald Trump becomes president that the Abraham Accords will be reinstated more or less. I suspect that would happen too, that there would be peace, a false peace in the Middle East. I'm pretty sure a lot of you may assume the same thing. Um, when we say false peace, we mean it, it won't be real peace. It'll be this uh, somehow blanket statement. You know, everything's going to be just somehow overlook the real problems in the Middle East. But it'll be some type of peace agreement. Excuse me, let me get some water real quick here. Um, but it'll definitely make Daniel 9.27, this prophecy, a reality. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon her like a woman in travail. It's a scripture in Daniel 9.27. So that brings us to the scripture. Does that mean that we have to wait till that scripture is prophesied and fulfilled for the return of Jesus Christ? No, I don't believe that any of these prophecies that are being fulfilled has to do with the return of Jesus Christ. Like so many people that watch these prophecies being fulfilled, which they are being fulfilled closer and closer, I think they're more like birth pains as we're watching the scriptures being fulfilled. What I think is that many people yearn for the bride of Christ to be taken up before those prophecies are fulfilled. I think that there's they kind of go hand in hand. Um, I, I think that's the understanding I've come to understand that the prophecies are going to be fulfilled whether the church is here or not and I, I apologize I, sometimes I wondered about it I've asked myself do we have to be here for that prophecy to be fulfilled remember everything points to Israel whatever happens in Israel is where the prophetic clock is definitely where we watch for. So watching Benjamin Netanyahu speak before the Congress and the reaction and the response is definitely reminds me of what Psalm 83 is. A tumult, as described, is an uprising against Israel. So that explains the scripture in Psalm 83. 
So a tumult, a riot or protest will explain that. So when we break down the scripture in Psalm 83, we understand what that means. So we should watch and see what happens tomorrow and watch for these things to come to pass. Um, as far as what we personally endure, it is a real walk of faith. Um, I have to say that some of us personally might be going through things that are wearing us down as saints. And it really is like a mustard seed of faith to get through some of the things that we're going through. Remember, Jesus said, all you need is a mustard seed of faith. And sometimes that's what it requires is a mustard seed of faith to get through the times we're living in. If that's all you can do is just have a mustard seed of faith because times we're living in are harder and harder and see the adversary, the devil is attacking the Christian more than ever. But you also notice there's been house cleaning going on in the churches with all the essay going on in the mega churches. You notice there's something going on in the bigger scheme of things. So God is at work. There's definitely bigger things happening. So we're watching God move in a mighty way to expose the evil things and the wickedness that is going on in the mega churches and some of the smaller churches that are continuing with this essay or abuses that are going on in the churches. So judgment begins at the house of God. What does that mean for the average person that goes online or does this or just exposing the truth of the word that is being exposing the lies of the phonies or the people that are doing what they're doing. Because really, a genuine Christian wants to know. A genuine Christian that's walking this out in faith is trying to live their life the best way they know how. Listen, we've all fallen short. We all got that far, okay? Many of us are saved by the grace of God. So... In fact, all of us are saved by the grace of God. So we're not here to judge. But at the same time, we have to use discernment. We must discern the times we live in. So when we're discerning, that means we can't go do the things we used to do or go places we used to go because it is like a crippling thing to walk into the areas of our life where there's darkness. We're children of the light, not of the dark. It says in the word, once you become a child of the light, you realize there's certain places you can't go anymore. There's certain places you can't, there's certain things you can't do. Listen, some of us have been on the fence and tests the waters and been lukewarm we know it's a dangerous place to be you don't want to be down that road when you start to realize how dangerous that road is and you realize that you can you can't have one foot in the world and one foot in Jesus you realize like okay I have to really be sold out for Jesus and once you come to that realization, you realize that while you love others and you pray for others and you want to do the right thing and serve the Lord, there are certain things that you have to start 
working it out in Jesus. Work it out daily. That doesn't mean that you totally abandon others. You pray for them. But your faith has to be your primary concern because what happens is the things that used to make your life dysfunctional and crazy and insane and or put you in a bad place is the things that probably God is trying to remove from your life and the thing is that God is trying to replace it with things that are holy, peaceful, and merciful and graceful in your life. He's giving you grace. He's giving you mercy. He's giving you peace about Let's just say, for example, you came from a dysfunctional home and you have peace and restoration in that area of your life. Or you came out of a broken marriage and now you have peace and restoration in that situation. You don't have to go back to that and revisit that. If, especially if you come out of a bad marriage or bad relationship, you don't have to return back there's no condemnation in Jesus Christ. It's like that thing is a dead subject. Jesus said, it's over. You don't have to revisit it anymore. So remember, when we go to the Word of God and we revisit, a lot of people want to get married again or want to have a restoration in their marriage or reconcile or do something. Like for women who've been in bad marriages or bad relationships, I'm just referring to myself, wouldn't it be so nice to be in a holy matrimony? After being in a bad marriage, the best way to start is go to Proverbs 31 and understand what the Lord wants for us to be in a marriage. But my only understanding is that Jesus is who we are married to first. When we are in a holy relationship with Jesus first, that be our focus, married ourselves into what the Lord wants us to be as husband and wives. And if there is a potential to be married and God ordains it, then you will have the answers you need. But I know there's that longing, and I know that there are people that long to be in a better relationship with others, especially in an intimate relationship. But the most important intimate relationship you need to start with is with Jesus Christ. So start there, and don't fret. Don't worry about whether you're going to be in a relationship with somebody else because one of the things I think that some of us have been in like pain in it's painful relationships and especially family of origin or families or past relationships one of the things that God deals with us is relationships especially when we're not healed yet. We must go through healing in those relationships to be restored back. And when we're restored back to those relationships that the Lord wants us to be restored back to, and there's wholeness and healing, then God can do a mighty work in us. And then we can do other things and serve the Lord the way we're intended to. I hope that answers a lot of questions, but for anyone to ask the questions whether they want to be and extend themselves into a relationship, I would halt and wait on Jesus for that relationship. As for everything else that is going on, the peace of the Lord is more important than anything. Once you have peace with the Lord, everything else is gravy, the way I look at it.
that watching for everything else that is coming to pass is a, kind of amazing. We know we have peace with the Lord at any time the Lord could return. If we have peace with the Lord and his soon return comes, isn't that an amazing gift to have the peace of the Lord and then Jesus comes and we're captured and caught away just like it says in 1 Thessalonians when the sound of the trump of God and the sound of the trumpet and we're caught up in the clouds after the dead in Christ rise first and we're there with the Lord forevermore. Amazing. It's an amazing thing to just try to imagine that moment. But until then, we have to live out this light in faith. So whenever we're struggling or wrestling with something, just remember the peace of the Lord, if we can have that restoration in our life, whatever areas we're wrestling with. If it's drugs, if it's gambling, if it's pornography, or if it's any of those things, if you can come to a resolution with the Lord with it, and you come to peace with it, and you say to the Lord, if you can walk this out daily, and you walk it out over a period of time, and you really realize the amazing grace that Jesus has in your life, then all these things will be added unto you when you put the Lord first. Thank you for watching, and God bless.